Okay, let's get started. We're going to go over Chapter 2, Lesson 5. We're going to compare and order fractions, decimals, and percents. The question for this chapter is to ask, when is it better to use a fraction, decimal, or percent? Okay, starting with page 129 to 135, we have two goals. We're going to compare and order fractions, and the second goal is to compare fractions, decimals, and percents. As always, we're going to start with the got it's. Now let's get right to it. All right, we have two thirds and four ninths. We have two different fractions. We need to compare them. Which one's bigger? Which one's smaller? Now what I would do, I always look at the denominators first. I have a three and a nine. I need an LCD. I need a least common denominator for three and nine. Okay, so LCD for three and nine. I'm going to do it one way. Don't worry, I'll do it more than one way. All right, three, six, nine, twelve. 15. At this point, I am listing multiples. Yep, right away, I can find that 9 is the LCD. Okay. So, since the 9 is already a denominator here, I don't have to do anything to it. But this, I'm going to change it. Now, if I'm making groups of 3 and I want 9, I need 3 groups of 3. And whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. Now I have 6 ninths. Okay. So, 6 ninths, 4 ninths. You should be able to tell that if we're making sets of 9, we have 6. And here we have sets of 9, we have 4. 6 out of 9 is bigger than 4 ninths. Okay? Easiest way to do it. If you know your time tables, let me just do it real fast. You don't have to do all this if you don't, if you don't need to. 2 thirds. I'm just going to rewrite it again. If you know your time tables, you look at the denominators. Oh, you know what? I see a connection between a 3 and a 9. I can make 3 groups of 3 to get 9. I'll do the same thing on the top. Same result. It's up to you. The more you know your time tables, the easier this gets. Alright, we're going to do letter B. Okay. This time we have 5 twelfths and seven eighths. Okay, it's a little harder. The denominators are definitely different. How are we gonna do this? We need an LCD again between 12 and eight, which would be the least common multiple. Okay, I'm gonna write this on this LCD. If you're looking for that, find the LCM, least common multiple. Okay, so 12 and eight. I'm going to do a factor tree just for the sake of argument. I don't know if you guys remember how to do this still. 2 times 6. 2 times 3. So 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. 8, we have 2 times 4. 2 is prime. We have 2 and 2. So 8 equals 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to write this a little differently. If you can see it or not, it's, there you go. All right, let's write this a little differently so you can see what's going on. Since we want the multiple, you have two and a two, two and a two. There's a third number two right there. Leave a blank space right there. And the 12 has a three as a factor, but the eight does not. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. You have to multiply all the different factors. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. So the LCD, or the least common multiple of 12 and 8, is 24. Okay. So. Let me just do this over here. I should have done that beginning, but hey, I forgot. <laughs> All right. 5 twelfths, 7 eighths. 24 is going to be the common denominator. Okay. Now, since we're comparing them, we don't have to simplify it. Once we find the answer, we just leave it as it is. 10 
out of 24, or 10 24th is less than 21 out of 24th, or 10 20, 21 24th. And there we go. Okay, that's the answer for letter B. Okay. Letter C. 1 6 5 18th. Okay, like I said, if you know your times tables and you see the answer right away, you can go to it. It's fine. I'm looking at the 6, I'm looking at the 18. I notice I can scale up the 6 by a factor of 3 to get to 18. So that tells me that 18 is going to be the common denominator. 3 eighteenths, 5 eighteenths. 3 parts out of 18 is less than 5 parts out of 18. And there's the answer for that. Okay. All right, let's get started with D. We are comparing fractions, but we're also putting them in order from least to greatest. So we have one half, five sixths, two thirds, and three fifths. Okay, it looks hard, but it's not. We have four different denominators, two, six, three, and five. Okay, we need to find the least common multiple. Okay. I'm gonna do the long way first. Not the wrong way, but the long way. Just to show you where I'm coming from. Okay. I'm gonna do the first five multiples for each denominator. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Still nothing. I'm going to do another 5. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 36, 42, 42 plus 6 is 48, 54, and then finally 60. Well, that took a while, but let's see what we have. We have 30, 30, 30. There's not a 30 here yet, but I know 30 will be a multiple because it's an even number, and 2 will get there. So it's 30. Okay, this took a while, right? It just shouldn't take that long. Let's show you a shortcut. What I like to do is use the cake method. If you guys remember, we did this a while ago. Okay, you take all the denominators, two, three, five, and six. You look for any common factors. Okay, I don't have anything for the three and the five, but I do have a common factor between the two and the sixth. So two times one, two times three. There you go. Nothing for the three, that just comes down. Nothing for the five, that just comes down. Okay. The three and the three still have a common factor. I'm gonna do this again. Three over there, the one. Three times one gives you three. The 5 comes down, 3 times 1 is 3, right? So it's just what I'm doing. 2 times 3, and again, I multiply all of it. If you guys remember this, we did this a while ago. 2 times 3 is 6, times 1 is 6, times 1 is 6, times 5 is 30, times 1 is 30. So, LCM is 30, which means the LCD is 30. Now, if you forgot how to do this, don't worry, I'll show you another way. The way you just, no, 2. Five, excuse me, two, six, three, and five. I guess you could have left it alone. All right, same thing, two. I'm doing a prime factorization. Two is just two. Six, I have two times three. Three is just three. <laughs> oh, I just did a five. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, now what I'm going to do.
Crazy, right? I think you really can't do much, but let's rewrite this. Okay, the 2 is just 2. The 6 has a 2, so that put that there. But the rest don't have a 2, I'm going to leave a blank spot. Times, 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 times. So that's done, and this is done. The 3, well, has a 3, so I'm going to put that there. But there's no 3 here, there's no 3 there. Oh, excuse me, yes there is, there it is. And there's nothing there, right? This is crazy, right? Okay. Five, right there. Nope, nope, and nope. And I should have written a, a two right there. I apologize for that. Okay. So now what? Remember, bring it all together. Just a two. Three. Five. Okay. Three ways of doing this. So either way, we know that <laughs> least common denominator is going to be thirty, and we're not done with the problem yet. Crazy, right? All right, let's rewrite the fractions. Don't worry. Now, again, if you nice, if you times tables, this goes really fast. Okay, I will show you even a, a quicker shortcut. And three fifths. Right, we said the denominator is going to be 30, so one half. The number is going to be 30. Five six. The number is going to be 30. Two thirds. The number is going to be 30. And the last three fifths. The number is going to be 30. Two times 15. One times 15. Okay. Six times five. 10, 10. Alright, so now we have 1530, 1830. If I put all these in order according to the numerator, because the numbers are all the same. 20, 30, 25, 30. Yep, there you go, from least to greatest. But this isn't the final answer, you have to write the original fractions. Okay, 15 thirties was one half. Next one was three fifths. Next one is two thirds. And the last one is five sixths. Okay, so that was goal one. We're done. A, B, C, and D cover goal number one, which is comparing and order fractions. But let's see if we can write down the steps. First thing you do, or first thing we did, we find the LCD, the least common denominator of the fractions. And just to remind you, the LCD is the LCM. Okay, you know how to do this, we've done it before. Second step, write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. <laughs> I don't play golf. For each fraction using the LCD. And three, finally, you compare the numerators. You did all that with the other problems, A through, A through D, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go over goal number two. And we're gonna compare everything, decimals, fractions, all that stuff all together, all right? This is letter E. And just like anything else, there's more than one way to do this. Two thirds. 
comparing it to six tenths. Okay, the first question I asked you before we started this was when's it easier or when's it better to use a fraction, a percent, or a decimal? In this case, I'm going to use a decimal. I'm going to change it to a fraction. Six tenths, the name says it all. Okay, still doesn't tell me anything. But I can simplify this. I notice I can simplify this. They both have a common factor of two because they're both even numbers. If I'm making groups of two, I can make three groups of two out of six. 10 divided by two is five. Okay, now we can work with this. We have two thirds, three fifths. We need a common denominator. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Multiply this denominator by that one. And this one by that. And see what happens. 10 fifteenths, 9 fifteenths. Okay, for making groups of 15, 10 has more than, than 9. Okay, or 10 is more than 9, I should say. So, what else? Is this the only way to do it? No, it's not. But it is a quicker way. If you want to change, another way you can do it, you can do it on your own to verify this. Divide the numerator by the denominator to make it into a decimal number, and then compare the decimal numbers and see what you get. Okay. Actually, I will do it on the side because some of you are going to be curious. Okay, two thirds as a decimal. Divide the numerator by the denominator. Okay, I can't make it to three out of two, so I add a zero. All right. Oh. I'm just doing simple division. You guys should know how to do this. I'll add another zero. Oh no, I know where this is going. I think you guys do too. But the point is, now you have 0.66. Okay? 66 hundredths and 6 tenths. We talked about this a while ago. To make this into, you have to have the same value. 100 parts, 10 parts, not fair. So you add a zero to make it 100 parts. Both have 100 parts. Here you have 66. Here you have 60. Okay, and you can see that 66 is more than 60. Okay, more than one way to do this, you find a way to do it. Okay. 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 0 0.7, 80 elevenths. All right. Again, I'm going to change this to a fraction. I just like that for now. That's just me. 7 tenths, 80 elevenths. Same thing I did before, just to keep it simple. Seventy-seven hundred and ten, because I know my time tables. Eighty over one hundred and ten. All right, I can see that seventy-seven. Excuse me, I can see the eighty is more than seventy-seven. And there's your answer. It's, now. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. Although technically I, I should write the original numbers. That means seven tenths is smaller than or less than eight elevenths. I probably should have done with the other one, but I'll remind you again before I give you the quiz. And on this one, remind me if you all right. One fifth, and then we have zero point two, which is two tenths. I like fractions, people. Again, if you don't like it, you can do decimal numbers. Change this. To a decimal number, you divide the numerator by the denominator. You can do that on the side here if you'd like. All right, so one fifth, two tenths. I can simplify this. Oh, look at that, one fifth, one fifth. They're equal, they're the same. H. Oh, no, we have a percent, 42%, percent, zero and 44. We have two choices. Well, many choices actually. We can change this to a decimal number, we can change that to percent, we can change it to fractions, but you know what? The thing about decimals and percents, it's all about the decimal point. So 42% is the same as 42, right? 42 per 100 is 42, 0, right? Okay. But we have to change this to a decimal number. So let's not forget, that's...
0 0.42, 0 0.44. And again, if you think of money, 42 cents is less than 44 cents. Okay, you find the way that works best for you. 7%, 7 tenths. Okay. I can't help this, I have to fill in circles. All right, 7%, 7 tenths. I can change this to a fraction or change this to a percent. Let's just do something different. I'm gonna change this to a percent. Want a denominator of 100? I know I could, if I make 10 groups of 10, I get 100. Do that. 70 per 100 is 70%. And there we go, 70 is more than seven. Last one, letter J. 6.5 equals, oh, oops, you didn't see that, 650%. Okay. I think the easiest thing to do would be to change this, because it's all about the decimal point. Makes it easy. All right, 6.5. Move decimal point to the right two spots. Add a percent symbol, add a zero. This stays the same. Okay, the last one is a word problem. Hiroshi found that three-fifths of his class prefers vanilla ice cream, 26% prefers chocolate, and 14 hundredths prefer strawberries. Which kind of ice cream do students prefer the least? All right, let's help if we write this down. Three-fifths of his class like vanilla. Again, use words so you know what you're talking about. We're talking about vanilla ice cream. We have 26% for chocolate. And then we have 14 hundredths that prefer, oops, don't need that, that'll mess me up. 14 per hundredths that like strawberry. So if I need to find the least, I need to put them in order from least to greatest. But I can't do that unless all three are the same. Either they're all gonna be fractions or they're all gonna be decimal numbers. Um, we can go many ways. How do I want to do this? You know what? Let's go with decimal numbers. Because these two are easy to change back and forth. Alright. 26% as a decimal number. How does that work? Take off the percentage symbol at a decimal number. Or write it. It's always there. You just don't see it. Alright. And now two steps to the left. Add a zero. So we have 0 0.26, 3 fifths as a decimal number, divide the numerator by denominator. I can't make groups of 5 out of 3, so I add a decimal point and a 0. Now 0.6, I can make 6 tenths, 0 0.6. Alright, so now I have 3 decimal numbers, let's see. We have 0 0.26, 0 0.6, and 0 0.14. Now, if we're going to do decimal numbers, that's great, but we have to have the same number of parts. Okay, here I have 100 parts, because 26 hundredths, nine meters 100, 100 parts, 6 tenths, now that's not, not going to work. We need 100 parts, because this has 100 parts, 14 hundredths, 14 out of 100. So, multiply by 10, now we have 60. All right, so we have 0, 14 hundredths, 26 hundredths, and 60 hundredths. <laughs> Weird funky six. All right. So 14 hundredths is the smallest, and that goes with strawberry. So the answer is strawberry. And that's it for the intro. Do the work, people. Try your best um, and ask questions.